Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where we're looking at badly made movies that did badly at the box office. Video game edition! Huzzah! Wow, wow, wow. Or should wow. I say, bleep, bloop, bloop. Nice, good. That's the one-up noise. Yes, it and is. And never is it more appropriate than this one Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. I'm always getting a one-up in those Man. games, as far as I know. If I... T- I was all- getting the fire flower in these games. I remember using a hand to look over a map, and, and, I, <laughs> yes. and I put the hand over a big one-up, and I pick it up, and then my hand gets a, gets a one-up. I've got two hands. Yep, good, good, You've played it, haven't you? I've played the Warcraft games. I've never played World of Warcraft. Me neither. And I know we look like people who've played World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. I know I look like... Look, I know I either look like a guy with a three-monitor setup or a guy who lives in a lighthouse, but I'm neither of those <laughs> things, all right? I'm somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so what does that mean? I'm a regular man? That's not true either. Weigh in in the comments. Am I a regular man? Am I normal? Let him know. Yeah. Let him know if he's normal and a regular man. But I did play the original Warcraft in Warcraft 2, so they're like the real-time yep. strategy ones, not the... Uh, not mon- what it's become. The MMORPG. The monolith. Situation. The monolith that is World of Warcraft. I knew it from the moment I saw it. I'm like, I cannot devote a single second to this because otherwise it will destroy my life. Absolutely. You're saving up for that lighthouse as well. That's true. That's true. You've got to pick one. You've got to pick a road. I'm going to have so many monitors in that lighthouse. <laughs> oh you better God. believe it. Stack them high in a lighthouse. Leave a like if you could. Uh, this is a pretty impressive undertaking for a movie that nobody saw or remembers. Absolutely. So this is Duncan Jones. Yep. Zowie Bowie himself. That's first right. First of all. Yeah. He, uh, he directed uh, Moon. Yep. Uh, a movie that uh, I think is generally very highly regarded. Mm-hmm. He directed Mute, a movie I've not seen. It's all right. Okay, then. But he directed Source Code. Well, I was going to say, I mean, last week we talked about Jake Gyllenhaal. Creep. This week we're talking about Duncan Jones. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I wish I was watching Source Code. It's all coming together, isn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Toby Kebbell's in this. Toby Kebbell's in this twice. God. He's back. He was in it last week. <laughs> and he's back with two roles. He's like, mm, one's not enough for me. This is a big year for Toby Kebbell. And by that I mean us talking about movies that Toby Kebbell are in. <laughs> Don't you think? They are movies Toby Kebbell are in. It's yeah. true. So this opens... With mm-hmm. Callan Mulvey, the patron saint of our podcast, The Weekly Planet, who looks like he's about to get stomped by an orc. Mm. So that was actually filmed as an initial teaser. That's the first thing they ever did. Oh, see. And they slotted into the front of this movie to be like, remember a time before this? And I'm like, well, I don't know what this is, so I don't... <laughs> yes. I don't know. Well, I mean, that's, to me, that is the... Um, that I is like it, though. The movie itself. As well, that and that opening. I like Okay, opening, sure, sure. Yeah. I do like it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the question that this movie... Uh, gave to me was do the fans love this one i'm sure we'll get to it later but i but i there's a lot of lore in this and there's yeah. a lot of kind of the mailbox is a big deal apparently people are like there's a mailbox like in the game you know you wave the hand over the mailbox you you pick up the mail nope and it says cha-ching one up <laughs> one up no i don't know what that is no <laughs> okay fair enough no I, I let's talk about it let's talk about the movie james well do you want to talk about the lead up because yes, initially sure. mm-hmm. it was announced in 2006, but then it was cancelled by Blizzard or postponed really because they were worried of the similarities to Lord of the Rings. But really, mm-hmm. that's probably a good time to do it. Absolutely. Because Lord of the Rings was done. There uh-huh. was no big fantasy property probably outside of Harry Potter that was doing any kind of real numbers. Mm. And this had a huge fan base then, right? Mm-hmm. Anyway, Sam Raimi came on board in 2009 with a script by Gary Witter, who of course wrote Rogue One or some of Rogue One. I don't know who wrote Rogue One. (laughs) Nobody knows. It's one of those Hollywood mysteries. I think it was one of those situations where every single person wrote one page and then just... (laughs) Handed it off to the next writer, and they couldn't, they couldn't read the previous page. Just to write another page. <laughs> Absolutely. But he ended up getting replaced by Duncan Jones in 2013. Duncan Jones, though, said that that original script was very one-sided. So the humans were the good guys and the monsters were the bad guys. So when he came on board, he was like, he scrapped all of that, and he wanted to tell both sides of that story, which I love. Because you see both sides. I see both sides, mm, Mason. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the sides of the humans, who seem to be mostly good, except for that corrupt wizard, and all of the Yorks were mostly terrible, aside from maybe two. Sure, absolutely. And the yeah. others are just like, yeah, who are we stomping? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh, we're not stomping them now. We're stomping this guy. All right. All right. That fits with our code of honor, apparently, <laughs> which we have. <laughs> That's right. Doesn't they don't they don't look like? I mean, you know, I'm I'm I'm, read, I'm I'm judging a book by its cover, but they don't look like you know a race of beings that have a code of honor. You know what I mean? No, they don't. And that doesn't that doesn't like it doesn't feel to me. I don't know. Maybe it's 
As an orc racist, how does it feel to you? As an orc racist, I kind of feel like the orc's depiction in the media, whether it be this or Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. or or maybe like a Warhammer, yeah. you know, the, the orcs strike me as like chaotic kind of party dudes Woo. kind of thing, you know? Yeah. They don't tr- strike me as... But big, I mean, big boys running amok. But again, maybe that's, you know, in the world of Warcraft world. Sure. Maybe that's maybe they're all about that honour, you know? You might be right. So the source of this movie... So source the s- code? Yeah, the source code of this movie. So apparently this, a lot of the story from this, I can't speak to this at all, <laughs> is taken from the books Rise of the Horde, okay. which tells of how the orcish horde was formed, and The Last Guardian, which shows the human side and reaction to the orcish invasion. There was also another director who put their hand up for this project. and I might save that to the end because oh. it's a fun one and a fun mean quote, which I, I you like know that. I okay. love. Great. Uh, it was filmed over 123 days, looking at a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, like huge sets. Mm. Everything's big and thick and it makes <laughs> yep. people look small. They're in like giant halls and giant chairs and they look teeny tiny. Why are you building your stuff so big? Right. You're little. Build it normal. Build it normal. Or smaller. (laughs) Then the actors don't have to work out. (laughs) That's right. Because they'll already look big. (laughs) It's a very busy movie, at least initially, because I was trying to keep track of, like, names and locations, and I think that wouldn't be a problem if I was immersed in this universe. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be like, oh, my God. But to me, it just sounded like, we got to get the blogosphere. King Grampton needs the Hexadorf. And I'm like, hate all of that. But all that kind (laughs) of falls away. Also Mm. doesn't really matter to the ultimate storyline. Yes, this movie grew on me by about the halfway mark. I was on board, and I think it's probably... Not so much that I'm I've become endeared to the characters, but more that I've I've done that. I've, there's been a realization that none of these, <laughs> none of these names really matter. It seems like if you know it, it's a nice little nod. Mm-hmm. And I think I know you mentioned this earlier that people on the whole do like this. It got mm. savaged by regular critics like us. That's right, the Illuminati. I thought we were men of the people. No, Mason, we're the Illuminati. Oh, what? Yeah, I could have been getting Illuminati benefits this whole time. <laughs> no, you haven't filled out the forms. Oh man, yeah, I could do with some Illuminati healthcare. <laughs> If I'm honest. <laughs> I mean, this is not something to go by normally, I would say. And you could even disregard this, but it's got a pretty significantly high Rotten Tomatoes audience score. I see. And I think that indicates that, like I said, nobody's seen this. But if you have seen it, you're a fan, and then you would go to this to voice your approval. Absolutely. So yeah. that that's how I read yeah. that. Yeah. I'll tell you what I like about this movie. Yep. I think all the character designs are great. Mm-hmm. All the various orc... They've, they've clearly taken a lot of time with every orc design, or at least every main... Yeah. Orc character, you know, they've all got a nice different look. They've all got different bejeweled tusks. A big tusk. They've got a big tusk or they've got, you know, assorted animal skeletons that they're yep. wearing as armour and all that sort of nooks stuff. Nooks and crannies all over them. All of their various nooks and crannies, of course. And, of course, Paula Patton as the, the half-orc who uh, they just went, oh, let's just let's just have a regular lady and paint her a sort of pus green. Yeah, initially I'm like, is this a tall woman? I mean, she's tall-ish. Sure, yeah. But she's not that much taller well, than a regular woman or maybe even mm. arguably the same height. Yeah, mm. and two notes to that. I think one is obviously that she has to interact with the humans the most. Yeah. So you need one that isn't as heavily CGI'd as, as the all the Hobbit others. Do the trick. Exactly. And also they want to give her a sort of, you know, a little bit of a romance situation. Yeah. You need that between her and, and Travis Fimmel's character. But I do think it would be better if she was just a regular orc in that situation, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's funny. Yeah, for you it's funny. Yeah. And also upsetting because you're an orc racist. That's correct, yes. <laughs> just to be clear, though, I'm also an orc racist. <laughs> it's- I'm with you. Uh, I also think one thing I find really funny about this universe and this movie is that pitting a normal person or even a soldier against an orc is insane. Mm. That's like fighting a bear in armor who can use a mace. Right. Like that is wild. One of them just throws a horse at one point. And I know you, you use like you use skills and speed to get around them. Yeah, but you can't dodge a horse, can you? <laughs> no, a, you can't. A, a horse being hurled at you. <laughs> but I mean, you don't, oh, oh, you know, in a lot of cases you don't need that because if you're a main character, mm. you have that plot armor, that special kind of plot armor where you get flung out of danger instead of being squashed flat. Yeah, that's it's right. It's one of those movies, you know. Yeah. And I'm sure also the balance in this works the same way as it does in the video games where everybody has a different whatever, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? When your Starcrafts come in, they're flying on their spaceships <laughs> right. and they're fighting the orcs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, all makes yeah. sense, doesn't it? It all balances out. One guy's got strength, one guy's got speed. But I don't, I yeah. don't think, I think... I think one side should have strength and speed. <laughs> it seems like one side does have strength and speed. Yeah, good. Yeah. Reflects real life. Sometimes somebody's just better than... 
Uh, also, I felt emotions during this. There's a moment where... Did you need to pee? No, Is that what Mason. You're talking about? No, never. Uh. There's a moment where uh, Ragnar Lothbrok from uh, Vikings, Travis Fimmel, yes. his son gets killed and it's like, that's a sad thing. And for me, I'm like, go get some revenge, man. No, see, for me, uh, that happened and I went, did we see his son before this? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Look, that and I might... was paying attention, but I'm like... Good emotional stakes if I'd met that kid before, and I don't know if I had. Yeah, I'm sure you had. There was probably a moment where it was like, I believe in you and whatever. Mm. You know, I believe in you and whatever. Sure. Whatever you need to hear. <laughs> Anyways, Wizards and Magic. I mm-hmm. uh, just want to say, sweet gig for Ben Foster, who spends most of this movie lying on the floor or taking a bath. Absolutely. Pretty cool, man. Yeah. At the end, he just gets to lie under a statue. Oh, the dream. Mm. Just, to, just to lie down and just fall asleep. Oh, my God. Yeah, but also I, I feel like they were setting him up for a fall because I, I imagine last day of filming, they're like, all right, nine hours in the makeup chair, actually. Oh, yeah. Because mm. he was an evil wizard, actually, wasn't he? He was an evil wizard all along. Yeah, God Didn't see damn. that coming, did you? No, I didn't. I mean... He used some evil wizard magic pretty early on, didn't he? Almost immediately, and all his behaviour was evil wizard behaviour. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, makes me wonder why they were all like, "Oh my, oh, oh, Ben Foster, my good wizard friend, my mm-hmm. wizard friend for decades." Is he your mate that's always acting out? Are you friends with him anyway? You know that well, guy. He's a wizard. You know, and then maybe one day at a bar, he gets beaten up, and all your friends are like, "Yeah, we kind of saw that." Coming. <laughs> yeah, we could have stepped in, but you know, <laughs> he kind of deserved it. He kind of deserves this one. <laughs> yeah, I do like the magic of this world, though. I feel like it's pretty impactful. There's fun little moments where just a guy gets turned into a sheep and left. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that works. I know it's in the game, but, like, do you turn back? Is anybody yeah, la- coming back? It lasts a minute. Were you not listening, James? No. And the bad guy, the bad wizard, it was pretty crazy when he took his cloak off. He's a big muscular he guy. He was ripped. <laughs> he was ripped, man. Yeah. That was he's crazy. the strongest and the fastest, and he's good at magic. Yep. Because sometimes life is just like that. <laughs> sometimes you, you, you have a go at a guy at a bar, and it turns out he's actually really big and really strong and fast, and he can do magic. And he pulls a coin out of your ear, and then he sticks it up your nose, <laughs> and you're like, ah! <laughs> Man, he'll hug the life out of you. Mm. There's that moment where he's got the human next to him and he's just like feeding off him slowly. Vape style. Oh, yeah. He's got to constantly get a puff of that human soul vape. Mmm, delicious. Yeah, and I was more invested as it went along in the final battle and it's happening on multiple fronts. You've got a wizard mm-hmm. showdown with young kid wizard and Ben Foster. That's right. You know, and you've got, the, you got, the, you got to open the gate because the gate, the orcs are going to come through. Yeah, yeah, this is a close the gate movie. It is. You, 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 you've got to close the gate. Every movie of this genre is either a capture the orb movie or a close the gate movie. Sometimes both. Sometimes it's both, but it's never neither. <laughs> and this is a close the gate movie and I respect it. At least with this close the gate movie. Glenn closed the gate. Whoa, very good. She's in this. She gets an uncredited cameo. Mason. I think she recorded that in a closet on her phone camera and they just CGI'd <laughs> everything around her. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think you're right. Mm. God, Glenn Close. Good to see her, right? Mm, yeah. Or were you like, this could be anybody. Could have been anybody. No, I knew it was Glenn Close and I loved it. No, but I mean like... Do you think that could have they could have given that role again to Toby Kebbell, maybe? No, because Glenn Close is the world's biggest World of Warcraft fan. I didn't know that. Mm, I knew it. Does she know that if you dig really far down in World of Warcraft, you'll get to the Dungeon Keeper universe? Huh. Did you know that? And if you go into the sky, it's Flight Simulator. That's amazing. All these games are linked. They're People all don't know connected. That. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild. But I was invested in that final battle. This kind of snuck up on me. Normally a movie like this, you get less invested uh-huh. as you go along, but it's the opposite. What do you think that was? Do you think it's the emotions? I think do you it's think the emotions. It's, do you think it's because the orc visual effects, they clearly worked on them enough that you actually can see them emoting? Yes. Whereas a lot of this sort of movie, it could be anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, it's the Gollum, it's the Andy Circus team, it's it's all mm. of that. It's Toby Kevil. It's Toby Kevil. Koba. Yeah. So it makes sense that it looks like this. And also, you know, people die in this that are important. Like the the lead orc dies, as does his wife. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, anything can really happen here. I hope Dominic Cooper doesn't get stabbed. He does! (laughs) He does, he gets stabbed. Yeah, he gets stabbed. He's Tony Stark's dad. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, man. Just linking it to Marvel, you got to... You think that's through a portal somewhere in this movie? It's definitely through a portal. Maybe a manhole in New York City, baby. Yeah, you dig deep enough. Yeah, yeah. You're going to come out in New York City. Also love that... um, if you're fighting against the orcs and you're a half orc woman, mm-hmm. and you know you're fighting alongside the king, and the king says, "Why don't you just stab me here just quickly?" Mm-hmm. and then you do that, code of honor, code of honor. All the orcs are just like, "Great, you weren't getting swarmed by orcs." And look, we were going to kill you, mm. but then at the very last second, you killed this guy, and now you're the best. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know about all that. Do you think it should work like that in real life? Like maybe you're a long line at the supermarket and. <laughs> Everybody's upset, but you just kill a guy and they're like, <laughs> Woo! 
Wow, you can go first now. <laughs> they probably would let you go first. I think they would definitely let you go first yeah, if you did that. You might not get too far. The Woolworth security guard might give you a bit of a run for your money. Those gates that close it would probably close on you now. Yeah, that's right. That's fun, isn't it? Oh, and there's a there's a showdown at the end, a big revenge showdown mm-hmm. against uh, Travis Fimmel and a guy with the gooeyest, spikiest hand who killed his son. That's right. Look, I like how it went down. Go for the nuts. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Bold move also. Do you they know? Have, do they even have nuts? Exactly. Well, they have babies. Yeah, but maybe not from there. Oh, it's a great point. We actually. don't know. Yeah, that's true. Could be all tusk related. Could be tusk related. Yeah, but it's not because they got him in the nuts. I was kind of hoping for more of a knockdown kind of drag out brawl because I had seen this at the movies. I'd forgotten most of it. Yes, but uh, you know, whatever. I guess. But boy, doesn't this set itself up for a movie to come? Yeah. Oh, the stakes have never been higher. Don't do worry. We, don't worry about do it. We, do we get it? Do we get the sequel? No. Oh, well, we can talk about that after we do. Trivia craft? I like that. Yes, good. It's the trivia section of the show. Here's some names that were considered for the lead. Paul, Wait, which lead? The, the the main guy. Travis Fimmel. Travis Fimmel. Okay. Australia's own. Is he? Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, good for him. He's in Vikings. He's in Vikings. He was a male model. He hasn't got it now. He's not as good looking I as I was going to say, was he a male model for <laughs> Awful Scraggly Beard magazine? <laughs> I mean, he is now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm a creep who lives in a lighthouse magazine. No, he's very good looking still, Mason. I've got a three monitor setup magazine. He wouldn't have three monitors. Mm -hmm. His phone probably flips out. He's a man of the land, as far as I can tell from his Instagram. Paul Dano feels more wizard related. He could be the little wizard man, yes. Anson Mount. That works. He's more the king, though. I I agree. Yeah, okay, all right. He's too big to be the king. You need a little king. Yeah, that's right. Makes everyone else look big. Mm, And all the props look bigger. Yeah. Anton Yelchin. Okay, yeah. I would see him more as the son, maybe. Or the wizard. He could be the, the young wizard. wizard. The young wizard. Yeah, RIP, one of the greats. There's a lot of video game stuff in this as mentioned. So there's a bit where, remember, it zooms over the battlefield. Oh, perfect. I'm like, oh, I wish there was a big hand. <laughs> I wish there was a big hand, Mason. Mm-hmm, sure, yeah. Their little war tables got little hexagonal parts to it. Okay, they're great. That's Good. from games. That is from the games. The mailbox, it's from games. Ma- the mailbox is from games. It's yeah. true. It's undeniable. And remember how I mentioned another director threw his hat into the ring for this? Oh, yes. Now, there was a man who ran amok in okay. the, between the years, I don't know, roughly 2000 to 2010, just making any kind of video game adaptation that would allow him. Oh, I know who this is. Yeah. Is it Mr. Uwe Boll? It certainly is. So he contacted Blizzard about directing the film, but... What is a great start if you're, <laughs> if you're walking down the street putting out resumes? <laughs> but Blizzard refused. We've seen everything you've done, they said. <laughs> Uwe Boll spoke to MTV News, and this is how he frames it. I got in contact with Paul Sams of Blizzard, and he said, we will not sell the movie rights, not to you, especially not to you, because it's such a big online game success. Maybe a bad movie would destroy that ongoing income. Which is possible, I guess. I mean, this survives outside of bad movies yeah. or movies that don't do well, so I'm sure it's fine, right? That's quite refreshing that he just said. Yeah. Like, he didn't sugarcoat that at all. He didn't say, oh, they said you'd be too good at this. <laughs> We'd never be able to make a sequel because your movie would be too good. Yeah. At least he said, no, we won't sell it to you because your movie will be bad. <laughs> anyway, in terms of uh, budget... Go on. It cost $160 million, which at the time, not adjusting for inflation, was the most expensive video game movie. Okay, all right. Was it also the most successful video game movie at the time? It was one of, because the return of this was $439.1 million. It also did really well in China. Mm-hmm. It holds the record for the largest weekday to midnight opening in, in China, in communist China, Whoa. which you love. Do I? Is that a new piece of law for this? Sure. Okay. <laughs> These last few weeks, we've been calling this a series of badly made movies that did badly. Yeah. But compared to some of the oh massive flops of, of, of the last couple of years, these are doing quite well. This is also on the upper echelon for me of video game movies by quite a long way. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty good one, Mason. Yeah, but I mean, you think about like the last couple of Marvel movies. Yeah. You know, there's been some soft box office openings recently. The Fall Guy. Precisely. Mm-hmm. $400 million is not bad. No. Well, according to THR, it needed $450 million to break even. Oh, well, then it is bad. Yeah, and executives say that it lost probably 30 to $40 million for them, which is funny because it's just executives. Yeah, it's that's not our money. F- that's funny to me. That's right. 
what are they going to spend the money on anyway? No, they're just going to put it in their bank account and watch number go up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, director Duncan Jones, though, he's acknowledged the problems with this movie and stated that the initial cut was going to be 40 minutes longer. But there is no extended I don't think that's, version. I don't think that's what would have saved it. Well, here's the thing, right? Yes. It's not like a clean 40 minutes. It doesn't exist. I see. Okay. So he said, trying to make a movie like Warcraft, you get killed by the death of a thousand cuts. You go through a writing process up to the deadline of shooting the thing. You lose ideas in the writing process. Then sets change for whatever reason and notes come in. You're changing things around a three and a half year process. You get these little changes that are constantly course correcting. When you make a little change, it doesn't seem like a big deal. When you keep making those little changes, suddenly you're basically spending all of your time trying to work out how to patch up what has been messed around with and as a result a lot of scenes ended up not being filmed or omitted in the early phase they cease to exist because the effects work never gets done some of it it's not even at that stage so there is no possibility of there ever being a director's cut it's purely in my head and he said that he's equally proud and furious about warcraft but would be open to the suggestion of a sequel okay so it wasn't just like a solid 40 minutes where the king teaches the half orc lady to be prim and proper like in my fair lady oh my God. Maybe it is. I mean, that would be cheap. Yeah. She's just painted pus yellow or whatever. There's no need for special effect. Mm -hmm. Not a single one. I mean, he would have to stand in a little ditch so yeah. she looks taller. He's not that tall, though. No, yeah. He's not that tall, Mason. Okay. It makes her look bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, Duncan Jones, his wife got cancer during the filming of this. Oh. But she got through it. And his dad, mm -hmm. David Bowie, you might have heard of, mm -hmm. died. Oh. So this is... Like, again, amazing that it's like this, you know? Yeah. It's pretty good. I was going to say, could there be a David Bowie song on the soundtrack? Maybe. Maybe that, maybe that would have saved it. What would be a good song? Let's Orc Dance, <laughs> could have been called. He could have called in a favour. He could have. Hey, Dad, could you, could you do a little <laughs> remix on this? You yeah, so there are these things called Orcs. Uh, and if you could, if you wouldn't mind. He's just like, I'll do it. I don't want to hear. It's I don't want to know about computers. You know China Girl? Mm. Orc Girl? Mm -hmm. Could you do that one? What about Orc China Girl? Nice. Yeah. Under Pressure from the Orcs. The Invasion <laughs> of the Orcs. Yeah, could you a, do? There's a you? lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. They come through that gate and they walk into it and then they get flipped upside down and they pop out of it. Mm. But then at the end, the gate's standing up. It's crazy how you can what you can do with gates these days. If you could incorporate all those as lyrics, <laughs> Dad, that would be <laughs> that would be helpful, actually. <laughs> Anyways, Daniel Richman, who's a popular scooper, and people will be like, uh, he actually uh, scooping, uh, uh, shut up. Sometimes he's right, sometimes he isn't. It's just something to talk about in the video, all right? That's right. So Daniel Richman, though, revealed in 2020 that there is another Warcraft movie in the works, but we don't know what that is. Uh, I would say it's almost certainly not a sequel to this. No, but I would, if I had to guess, I would say full CGI animated yep. and on Netflix, all episodes at once, <laughs> and everybody will immediately forget about it. Uh -huh. And they'll say, not a patch on the original. Mm-hmm. Not a patch on it. No. Mm. All those cut scenes from Warcraft and Starcraft, same um, same game. <gasps> Shared universe. Shared. It's not a sh it just is. Oh. It's just the same, Mason. Okay, all yeah. right. All right, guess what? We've got one more of these to do. Oh. And why not end on a real low? Uh, here's a hint. <laughs> uh, why end on a real low? <laughs> here's a hint. Oh, is it Assassin's Creed? It is Assassin's Creed. <sighs> got to watch all of Assassin's Creed. Yeah. I've never gotten through it. We have attempted it before. I've attempted it repeatedly. <laughs> Look, it could have been Need for Speed. So count your lucky stars, mate. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, if you do want to see that early, you can actually head over to BigSandwich.co where these always go up quite early, don't they? That's correct. But that's not the only thing up there. There's exclusive stuff. We do video game Let's Plays. We do movie commentaries. We do bonus podcasts. That's right. Also, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out every Monday, but of course there on Sunday. All of that is ad-free, as mentioned, exclusive. But you don't have to. You can just subscribe here and hang about. Yeah, just watch all this stuff with ads. Yep. Maybe you love ads. Maybe you love ads. Yeah. Also, we have a podcast. Did I say that? Yep. Yeah, the podcast, it's got its own YouTube channel. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple. It's on Give TikTok. It, is it? Oh, yeah. Some of it's on TikTok. That's right. Clips, snippets. Mm -hmm. Get a feel for it. Clippets. And then say, not for me. Mm. Mute. But young, young kids with video games, they like TikTok. They love video games and TikTok. Mm, they love getting a one-up. They do, don't they? They love getting to level three. <sighs> You know when you watch a, mo a TV show or a movie or something and, you know. It's level three. Mom, I need to Why did you unplug the TV? It was almost level three. Shut up, nobody talks about that. Because I'm a bitch. Movies, you know. She would be a bitch. Yeah, she? in yeah. the 90s, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thanks, everyone. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.